Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm going to be diving into the Mithril Mine, the new dungeon ranking event. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to solidify your place in the top 100, therefore granting you guys all those cool rewards, the plates, etc. So we can go over here, and I'm going to show you guys what you guys are going to be able to get. In the top 11 through 100, you're going to be able to get this green Mithril Mine high ranking plate, along with a bunch of really nice synthesis materials and 20 four star plus weapon guaranteed draw tickets. All right, guys, so as you guys can see, my rank is 38, which I'm guessing will hold up until um, up until the time this event goes down. Um, this, I would say, is not a fully min maxed run. This is going to be the bare bones of the run, a full strategy. This strategy is going to work. However, if you guys tweak it a little bit here and there, I think you might be able to get an extra 100,000 points here and there, depending on how good your run is. As you guys can see, my best run was down here at 1.93 million, which is pretty damn solid. So even if I went down 10 ranks a day, I still wouldn't be out of the top 100. Now let's go down here to the very hard fight and I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing this. This is going to be with a 60% score boost and I am going to be doing this with a full DPS team, not focusing on healing at all. All right, so I am going to be running a team 274,000 power with a physical fire DPS cloud. Yuffie, who is acting as primarily a buffer slash imperiler and a very strong magic fire DPS Zack. All right, so let's go down here. Let's go to the map. I'm going to show you guys my route, my plan. Then we'll take a look at the enemies. I'll show you guys anything you need to know. And then I'm going to dive into the team and the dungeon. All right, so right off the bat, for any of you guys who saw my last video showing newer players how to get all the S tier rewards, it's going to be more or less the same thing. We are going to fight the Sahagin Prince first and foremost. After killing him, we're going to run up here, grab a fire cocktail. I'm going to immediately pop one on Zack, then run up here into the top corner, fight the set of adds, grab the second chest, come down here, fight Stamp or the Gallum Balor. All right, we're going to take him down. Immediately after taking him down, I'm going to pop another fire cocktail on Zack, grab this chest, grab the second set of adds right here, then we're going to take on the Gallon Balor Akana right here. We're going to do this in a way that is going to kill him while saving us one summon and also setting us up to take down the next three soldiers with our second summon. Um, by this point in time, once you beat the Sahagan Prince, we're going to take the 20% score boost. Once we beat the Gallon Balor Akana, we're going to take the 40%. All right, we're going to take the magic defense from the Gallon Balor and the ice defense from the three soldiers. After we beat them, we are going to bypass them, getting our way to Shiva, and we are just going to burn her down as fast as possible. All right, so for this fight, guys, Shiva is going to be able to inflict fatigue and fog on you. We are going to take one trance ability that's going to make us immune to fog, but she still can cast fatigue in the fight. So I do recommend bringing a care, at least one character with a healing Asuna fatigue. Other than that, there's not much you need from her. We're not going to be debuffing her magic attack. We're literally just going to be burning down her damage. The uh, Sahagin Prince is going to be the easiest boss to fight. He should go down no problem, especially if you're going for the top 100. You're going to have some decent fire gear. Same thing with the Gallum Balor Akana. Same thing, honestly, with the Gallum... Or I always call this guy the Gallum Balor Akana. I'm just going to call him Stamp. Same thing with Stamp. He's going to go down pretty easily. The Gallum Balor Akana is also going to go down pretty easy. He can be a total pain if you can't kill him right off the bat. If you have to... If this guy was the final fight of the dungeon instead of Shiva this dungeon would be a whole different story, guys. It would be way, way, way hard. All right. Other than that, when we get to these three soldiers, they can be a bit annoying because we're pretty debuffed by the time we get to them. So normally I will pop a uh, cottage just before them just to keep everyone uh, topped up in health, but we're not going to be healing at all until that point and then dropping a mega elixir before Shiva. 
All right, so let's go into the team here, guys. All right, so Cloud over here, of course, running the Fire Arcanum set with the Crimson Flare Limit Break right here, or the Summon, rather, I should say. I am gonna be running the Sky Splitter at OB8. Let's check here. I think that I can get it one more OB level. All right, I actually can. So I'll be running the Sky Splitter OB9, actually. I know a lot of you guys out there have gotten this to OB10. I haven't quite got it there yet. All right. And I'm going to be running the Stream Saber in the second slot here for the boost physical attack to all allies, um, which is basically just going to help Cloud out. Over here on Yuffie, I am running the buff debuff extension costume along with Bahamut's Mega Flare here. As you can see, I am going to be running Yuffie in a full magic build. Her first weapon is going to be the Crystal Cross. This is going to get, allow her to cast the command ability Stalwart Faith, which raises the magic attack to high of a single ally. This is going to get focused on Zack and allow Zack to do an enormous amount of damage in this dungeon as magic users have a far easier time doing damage than physical users. Physical users are going to take the brunt force of the detriments here, which is going to slowly reduce Cloud's efficacy throughout the fight. All right, on top of that, by, by bringing in Yuffie as a magic user, it allows you to equip Bahamut, which is going to increase our summon blast damage in the fight against Shiva. In her secondary slot, we have the Boomerang, which is going to go from mid to high tier on the Fire Imperil. Super important for doing damage fast in this dungeon. And so in order to not have to cast this twice for her, I did equip a Fire Breach on Cloud. So Cloud will be setting up Yuffie every time to take the Imperil to high. Almost basically in every single boss fight, I will Fire Breach with Cloud and then Boomerang with Yuffie. And that's gonna set up essentially everything. Last but not least, we have Zach Fair over here. He is running his Magic Fire DPS Arcanum set with Ifrit's Hellfire slotted on him. We do have the OB3. What is this weapon called again? The Stream Guard. I don't know. These weapons are strange names to me. Stream Guard. All right, but it does look sick. It looks really sick. All right, so the OB3 Stream Guard right there. And in the offhand, I'm going to be running the Arc Sword. This is going to allow Zach to instantly high break magic defense on any of the enemies that can actually accept that so let's go in here really quick and just see if shiva can be broken on magic defense she can can the gallon below no he cannot stamp he can i'm not too worried about any of the other ones except for shiva and the gallon below arcana all right now let's look at the materia setups here like i said we're going to bring one healing asuna fatigue on one of the characters so slot it however which way you can I'm going to bring a Kira on Yuffie and a Kira on Zack. Fire Breach, very important here on Cloud, unless you have the OB6 Boomerang or a way to imperil high on a single cast. Other than that, I have a Fire Blow on Yuffie, very important for her dealing extra damage on the side, and a Fire for the stat stick over here on Zack. In our last Sigil slots, I do have Triangle Sigils on every character, as every single boss in this dungeon has a Triangle Sigil break. Although, to be honest, guys, we're going to be killing them so fast, they're not even going to get to their sigil break. So you guys can slot stat sticks there if you can roughly, more or less, kill them around the same time I'm doing it. All right, now to jump into the back end builds for these characters, guys, let's go over here to Cloud. We'll look at his stats. He's sitting at 107k power, 7.4k HP, 4k physical attack, 113 physical defense, and 104 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here, with physical attack and fire potency being the number one things here. This is a DPS run, guys. Keep that in mind. Defenses are not nearly as important here, although having a little bit of extra HP definitely going to help. I'll bring up his full set of abilities right here. Now for his sub equipments, I am going to be running the Prototype Crimson Blade for the attack fire potency, the Radiant Edge here for the physical attack boost fire potency, and the Crew Kicker for the HP fire potency as well. I want to check to see if, oh no, I can't level that up. Bummer. All right. So that is going to be Cloud sub weapons right there. Over here on Yuffie Kisaragi, she's going to be running at 77k power, 6.7k HP, 3.5k magic attack, so super solid, 111 physical defense, and 106 magic defense. 
All right, for her R abilities, super important to boost magic attack as much as possible and fire potency. I'd say these are the two most important things for her. Then with a little bit of HP right there, that's what I'm shooting for. The boost magic ability potency is gonna help in the back end. And then the buff debuff extension is also gonna greatly help as well coming from the costume. Her sub weapons are going to be the Sun Umbrella, a very, very good uh, weapon for boosting magic R abilities right here. But slot anything that you guys can that's gonna increase her magic damage. We are going to be running the new Egg Caller. This is the free event weapon from the current event, Tea Party, which is going to boost her magic attack and fire potency as well. And last but not least, in her third slot, the Protector's Blade from Sephiroth to boost magic attack all allies and boost the magic ability potency as well. Right, so she is really supporting Zack hard in this fight. All right, Last but not least, we have Zack himself, my favorite costume of all the Limit Break draws. He's sitting at 91k power, 5.9k HP, so he is a tad low, but it's going to be alright. His magic attack is 3.4k, 112 physical defense, flat 100 uh, magic defense right there. His R abilities are going to be boost magic attack level 5. I think that we probably can't slot anything different in here. Yeah, so his, his uh, R abilities are going to be boost magic attack level 5. Boost Fire Potency level 6, Flame Blade Arcanum are going to be the most important ones. HP if you can fit it, I couldn't in this build, but it is going to be okay even if you're running him a 55 HP or higher. Alright, his sub equipments are going to be the Crystal Sword Z for the attack fire potency, the Flame Projector for the magic attack fire potency as well, and last but not least, the Carrot Sword for the boost magic attack fire potency. All right, guys, so all in all, looking pretty solid for the team. As you guys can see, this team is meant to just take things down as fast as possible. That being said, let's get into the fight. All right, guys, so honestly, this dungeon I felt overall was not super complicated in comparison to some of them. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to show you guys the quickest, easiest way to get in the top 100. All right, guys, here we are going into the Sahagan Prince fight right here. Right at the beginning, I am just going to Fire Breach with Cloud, switch over to Yuffie, Flurry of Steel, take that Imperil to high, and then we're just going to do damage as quickly as we can, as fast as we can, and burn the Sahagan Prince to the ground. There you have it. First boss down, literally just as easy as that. He's a cinch. Same with Stamp, he's also a cinch. To be honest, they're all pretty easy. Uh, they start to get progressively harder as you take the detrimental score boost effects, but on a whole, the dungeon is not terribly hard. However, to get in the top 10, that's another story, guys. That's something I've actually never done, but I would like to one day. All right, so right off the bat here, guys, I am gonna take the 15% score boost. Only Cloud is gonna take a detriment to this, which is nice. All right, we're gonna run up here, grab this chest. The very first thing I'm going to do is drop a fire cocktail on Zack. If you guys don't know, you can use a fire cocktail and go into a fight against adds. It will not wear off until you do a boss fight. All right, so we're going to be fighting adds that are weak to fire. So I'm going to pop it. All right, here we go. We'll run up here. We'll grab this chest. That's a little trick for using those cocktails, guys. All right, so here we go. Heading into this fight with the adds right here. All right, I'm just going to take out the first one with Zack. And I'm going to try and get my ATB up as high as I can in this fight. All right, with Yuffie, she's going to do a couple of hits right there. And we're basically going to take those guys out super fast. All right, so that's going to be the first set of adds. There are two sets of adds in this dungeon, guys. All right. After that, we're going to run down here to Stamp. I will show you guys that the Fire Cocktail has not worn off on Zack. It's right there. You guys got to always remember that when you go into a fight against Stamp, we switch to the defensive stance right away every single time. That's how it goes. All right, so I'm going to watch the intro real quick. I'm going to switch to the defense stance and switch to Cloud. All right. There we go. It did switch to Cloud. Perfect timing. After that, we'll switch it back. Fire Breach right away. And we're going to immediately take that Imperil to high. And now we're just going to do as much damage as we can, as fast as we can do it. 
you guys will see that very much like the last fight, this one is going to go by real quick. All right, there we go, and boom. Stamp down. Two bosses in, two bosses down. I'm going to show you guys, it's really not that bad. This one is, I think, to get in the top 100, definitely a little bit easier. Um, however, it is going to depend on your fire setups. I am running two fire characters as well, so I'm not sure how difficult it is without that. All right. Trance abilities. Right here, we're going to take the enhanced total defense. 60% magic defense, 30% healing potency. All right. Okay. After that, I'm going to run down, grab this chest. All right, we are going to fight the next set of adds. So what I am going to do is drop a fire cocktail. Actually, I'm going to drop the fire cocktail on Cloud this time. I'm going to show you guys why, because I'm going to use Cloud to kill the um, Gallum Arcana. All right, here we go. And now we're going to run up here. We're going to take on these adds. All right. And the goal here is to get our limit breaks relatively close to filling up I'd say above 80% or else we'll have to use a summon charge here all right so here we are with Zach right now all right with Yuffie she's gonna use Fyra Cloud is gonna blazing strike all right all right we'll blazing strike again all right and we are gonna take down those adds I'm not sure we quite have enough for Cloud. I think that Cloud might be close enough to get off the uh, Crimson Flare before the Gallum Balor Akana. Let me check. Cloud is like three hits away. I think he should be good. Um, we're going to have to risk it on this, guys, and see if it's good enough. All right, so before we go into the Gallum Balor Akana fight, you just want to make sure that you have at least 2,500 HP on your characters or you do need to heal. All right, just to let you guys know. So I am going to drop, oh no, we already used the fire cocktail on cloud. So we are going to be good just to be safe. I think I will, no, I'm not going to drop one on Zach actually. All right. So I think I'm going to be good on that. We'll see how this goes. We're just going to go straight into this fight. Same thing with stamp. You're going to guard right off the bat. Same thing, guys. All right, here we go. Mutated stamp, back for revenge. All right, so I'm gonna switch to the defense stance and then switch over to cloud. All right, here we go. Oop, accidentally switched to Yuffie. All right, there we go. She accidentally casted right there. All right, we're gonna take the imperil down to high. Zack is gonna start doing as much damage as he can. Cloud is gonna start doing as much damage as he can. And Yuffie is gonna start doing as much damage as she can. And then we are going to get off this attack right here at the end. Boom. All right, and hopefully this is gonna be enough to take down the Gallum Balor. And I think we also might have charged Zack's Hellfire at the same time. That is the goal. Boom, there you have it. All right, and Zack got Hellfire ready. That is the goal for the three soldiers right there. So we don't have to use an extra summon charge. That worked out perfect. All right, so we're on, we're on a smooth roll here, guys. All right, so let's look at the trance abilities right here. We are going to take the 40% score boost over here. All right, and this is where things start to get a little more difficult. All right, so we'll take that score boost right there. But as you guys can see, and I'll show you guys here in a second my summon gauge. All right, so my summon gauge on Zach is full. We are good to go. Now, I like to drop a cottage right here. These guys can be really annoying. And now that we are kind of fully debuffed i'm also going to drop a fire cocktail you want to have three fire cocktails left for shiva so just keep that in mind that's why i've only been using one per fight i'm going to drop this on zach all right now the goal here is to take these guys out as fast as possible i drop a cottage because sometimes they can do enough damage to kill you and i want this fight to be clean smooth and easy like i said this is not a min maxed run it's close but you can definitely pull some extra uh points from here and there all right so i'm going to run into this fight and we are going to start this off with imperiling the main guy all right so cloud is going to fire breach 
Yuffie is going to Flurry of Steel. Zack is going to Igniting Stream. And we are going to drop the immediate Hellfire right here. That's going to take out the first guy for sure. All right, now we just have two guys left after this. All right, so it doesn't matter which one we target. I'm going to switch over to Cloud. We're going to do the exact same thing. Fire Breach, imperil it to high, immediately start doing as much damage as we can. All right, there's one and two down and three down right here. I'll get off a little bit of damage. He is going to get off this Blazara. All right. But after this, I'm not. I'm just gonna forego the uh, imperils, and we are just going to deal as much damage as we can right here. All right, here we go, and we are good. So actually, that time I probably didn't need the cottage, although I did have one run where I lost right there. I was killed, or at least they killed Zach, and then it was hard to keep up on the damage. All right, because Cloud is pretty debuffed right now at the moment. All right, so you guys probably could save that cottage instead. I'm playing it safe. All right, so for the last transibility, we are going to take the ice resist 50% and the fog resist. This is going to allow us to not have to use the magic defense potion down below. All right, after that, we're going to run down to Shiva. We're going to prepare for the final battle. All right, so here we go, guys. From here, we're going to drop a Mega Elixir, get everyone's summons full, and I'm going to drop three Fire Cocktails on every character. The goal at the beginning of this fight is to simply completely debuff Shiva and get off all of the summons and the limit breaks right off the bat, or right before she gets off Diamond Dust. All right, I'm going to show you guys right here and now. All right, so here comes Shiva. Same thing, straight to Cloud, Fire Breach, take the Imperil to High. All right, here we go. The moment I take the Imperil to high, I'm going to stay on Yuffie, and I'm going to use Stalwart Faith. All right, here we go. Zack is going to Igniting Stream. Cloud will fatigue heal himself. Yuffie will heal. All right, and now I'm going to drop the Crimson Flare, Hellfire, Mega Flare right here on Shiva, and we are looking good to go. Zack is buffed up, fully imperiled on Shiva. Everyone is looking solid. We're going to take out both the adds and have just enough time to defend against the diamond dust right there. All right, so here comes Hellfire. Let's fucking go. Guys, I think that Final Fantasy 16 might have a crossover coming, by the way. I think that it might just be happening. Hopefully I'm right. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. All right, so here's Mega Flare to top it off. One of my favorite summons in the game. I cannot wait for Neo Bahamut, to be honest. That was my favorite summon in Original 7 right there. All right, then we're going to switch over. We're going to block Shiva's Diamond Dust right here. All right, and from here on out, no healing. We are going straight damage all the way to the end of the fight, guys. All right, it does not matter if you lose a character here and there. All right, I'm going to up the Imperil, and we are just going to take the damage down right here. All right, as much as we can, as fast as we can do it. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm going to re-up the Imperil right here. Okay, I'm going to jump to Cloud. We're going to Fire Breach. Yuffie is going to Flurry of Steel. And we are going to get off some damage right here. All right, we're going to block this Heavenly uh, Strike. It might kill a character. It might take down Cloud, but he has done his part in this fight. He is going to survive. And from this point out, guys, like I said, pure damage. She's stunned right now. We are totally good. We can do as much damage right here as we can. And Shiva is down. All right, guys, that is the Mithril Mine. I think this might be my best run yet. Not quite sure. We're going to have to see how it goes. Um, I do think that you can improve this score just a little bit. Just remove the Cottage. Um... And I'm going to be trying maybe one more video guide where I take the 80% score boost. Although, in my opinion, sometimes taking the higher score boost lowers your score overall just because the battles take longer. But I will try it, and if I find that it works, I will be putting up a guide for the 80% score boost. All right, so let's see what we get here. All right, 1,918,000. I think that's like 10,000 less than the last one that I did. So pretty solid overall. 
I am fairly um, confident that this score will keep in the top 100 by the time this event dungeon is over. If I find that it's falling out and I think that it might not, then I will make another guide before the end of this dungeon to help solidify your guys ranking at that point in time. That being said, I thought this dungeon was a lot of fun. What did you guys think of it? I thought it was interesting. I like using fire. I really liked Zack's new uh, fire arcanum costume. I thought it was super sick and I'm stoked that I get to try it out. I'm pretty sure that like anyone who pulled Aerith's costume is probably absolutely crushing it. It looks like the number one player has Kate Sith, Zack, and Sephiroth right here. But, oh, I guess no one's really using Aerith. All right. No. Wow. I'm actually super surprised. Is anyone in the top 10 using? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Number five is using Aerith. She's my girl. I mean, she's she's amazing, right? All right, but I, I thought she would be really good on this floor or this dungeon. Anyways, guys, um, if you guys have any questions, as usual, just hit me up in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them or come join our Discord. It's called the Curseborn Discord. There's a link in the description of every video. That being said, if this guide was helpful to you guys today, if it was fun to watch, entertaining, and you guys just like hanging out, don't forget to drop a comment on the video, say what up, and drop a like as well. And if you are not subscribed to the channel and you want to see more of my videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe as well. That being said, I wish you guys the best of luck out there, guys. Get in the top 100. Get those rewards. All right, my friends. Have a wonderful night. Take care and peace.